Hello, I'm Laura Quintana, Vice President and General Manager of Cisco Networking Academy. I am so excited to welcome you to this year's International Girls in ICT Day broadcast. We have tens of thousands of viewers tuned in from all over the globe today. Educators, students, local high schools, community colleges, and universities. So let me start by thanking you for being here with us for this special event. Our broadcast is brought to you by Cisco employee volunteers from around the world and Cisco Networking Academy's Women Rock IT program. Our Women Rock IT mission is to inspire girls and women to consider science, technology, engineering, arts, and math subjects and careers in IT. Here's what I know. When we showcase female role models in the industry, we can inspire young people's future. This year's theme for Girls in ICT Day is access and safety, because when girls can safely access and explore the digital world, they can also explore careers in IT. You can learn more about Women Rock IT at the link in the chat. Since 2014, we've had 1.8 million people join our live broadcasts with 1 million people going on to enroll in a Cisco Networking Academy course. Some of you may not know what Cisco Networking Academy is, so I'll take a moment to explain. Our focus is on empowering all people with career possibilities through technology and education. Through our education partners, instructors, and self-paced courses, we have helped over 15 million learners many going on to find well-paying jobs and fantastic careers in technology. The Cisco Networking Academy offers you a lot of learning choices to acquire skills in cybersecurity, networking, IoT, programming, and more. At the end of the broadcast, we'll provide a link where you can find an academy near you. To get started, everyone here today can access for free skills for all with Cisco Networking Academy to start on your cybersecurity learning journey. So today is all about esports, the fastest growing sport in the world, and it is booming right now. Esports is the only sport that is 100% dependent on technology, and it requires a powerful, reliable, and trusted network. Cisco is powering the future of esports as the official enterprise networking partner of Riot League of Legends Esports. We help this young, influential community thrive, connect, and reach their possibilities. Riot chose Cisco because we have the fastest network and zero ping when every millisecond counts. To continue enhancing experiences for fans, professionals, and the gaming industry, we need people to build and maintain the network. So that's where Cisco Networking Academy and our partners come in, helping to fill that need by providing an accessible quality IT education. For our special two-part series on esports, we've partnered with the GameHers, a community and media platform for women, femme identifying, and gamers. We are pleased to have co-founder and chief innovation officer, Verda Maloney, as our MC today. So welcome, Verda. I'm excited for you to tell us more about your organization and how you help gamers stay safe online. Thank you, Laura, and hello, everyone. I'm Verda Maloney, co-founder and chief innovation officer at The Gamers, and I am your host today. Did you know that 45% of gamers in the world identify as women? That's almost half of the world gaming population. That really excites me as a gamer. Creating safer spaces for women and femme identifying gamers is absolutely necessary and long overdue. At The Gamers, we do this by building inclusive, sexist free spaces where individuals can unapologetically and unabashedly bring their whole selves to gaming, welcoming the competitive gamers, cozy gamers, and everything in between. Go check us out after the broadcast. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Twitch, LinkedIn, and our very own app called the GameHers app. 
This year, Girls in ICT Day is highlighting esports, a 170 billion US dollar global industry with 2.9 billion gamers worldwide. Today, you'll hear about the technology powering the future of esports and the exploding career opportunities that the industry offers. Esports encourages gamers to think together, to work together, to communicate, show resilience under pressure, and think strategically. In the process, gamers build confidence as well as cognitive and social skills. This is a two-way event, so feel free to jump into the chat throughout and share your thoughts. We want to hear from you. And if you haven't already, be sure to take the Student IT Challenge, IT's Game On. Bring your A game from now until September 15th to earn points, get on the leaderboard, and win some great prizes. You can even earn points today by sharing pictures on social media, uploading your certificate of participation, and completing our survey at the end of the broadcast. So let's get started. You're about to hear from three women changing the game in esports. Network engineer at Riot Games and Cisco Networking Academy alumni, Sana Sheikh, founder of GamerSafer, helping to scale safe, positive, and fair play experiences for millions of gamers worldwide, Maria Tamalini, and CEO and founder of Coalition of Parents in Esports, Shay Williams. Please hold your questions for our speakers until the end of the session. First up, we have Sana Sheikh, walking us through a day in her life on campus at Riot Games, one of the world's largest video game developers, and showing us how it all starts with the network. Welcome, Sana. Thank you so much for the introduction, Vata. Let's get started. So working at Riot Games, so it's basically like one of the passion for me to be part of Riot Games. As a gamer, I love playing games. So League of Legends is like one of the games I usually play. Uh, but then I'm much more into like puzzles game, escape room games, and a lot of like non-PC games basically. So I, I play like board games, etc. Apart from the passion for gaming, I love networking. Uh, networking is one of the things that helps me keep motivated whenever I get for work every Monday or any, any day. It's like, okay, I get to do something that I love. So working at Riot Games has given me the opportunity to actually balance my life that way, as in like as a gamer plus a network engineer. So at Riot Direct is a team that I'm part of at Riot Games. We actually help players that they get the best latency and the best experience playing any of the uh, Riot Games, especially League of Legends. Like all of these games have very latency sensitivity, like it has to be on point, like two seconds can make a big difference in a gameplay. We make sure that we get the best experience for players. For that, we actually build pops. Pops are like point-to-point presence where we go to as close possible to the players where they are located around the globe and then make sure that they have the best connectivity uh, so that they can play the game seamlessly. My best area that I love working at is try to solve the player pain points for players. For example, if someone's having a network issue, okay, our internet is not working, or they have like extremely high latency where they are supposed to be just getting half of it. So that's the area of problem I really love into so that I can just real time help them. Uh, and then it gives me a great sense of relief and it's like, okay, yeah, I've done something better for someone. Also, in addition, my passion for network engineering, I have a great team of leaders. I have three senior engineers and also some of my mentors who always help me push towards being how I can do better in something. And most importantly, uh, being part of Riot Games is just like having fun, just like playing games. I enjoy doing my work. And that's basically the day I have at Riot Games. I'll get started and deep dive into on how I got into networking at first. So there's this value at Riot Games where it says dare to dream. And I resonate with this value so, so much because I think like if we don't dare to dream, we basically cannot achieve anything. So the idea of being a network engineer started as I did my bachelor's of engineering, which is in electronics and telecommunication in India. Uh, During this course, I actually got used to some of the networking fundamentals classes. And that was like the very beginning of how I was introduced into networking. At that point, I didn't realize that this could be a career path or this could be something that I could pursue in future. So when I did all these subjects, I somehow got interested into, I want to know more about it, like how all of these pieces fit together. 
I do not knew anything about it. So it's like, okay, the next step is like, I, I was planning to do my master's. So I moved to the United States and I did my master's of science. And I, I planned that I will intentionally take systems and computers because those systems and computer classes actually offered some of the networking subjects that would actually give me more insight on how I can be. And as a network engineer, or what steps I can I need to take forward in order to go dive into it. During these classes, I was actually also introduced by my professor, like in order to get the basic standard industry using fundamentals, I can also participate in certification courses like Cisco Certified Network Associate, Cisco Certified Network Professionals. So I, I gave the CCNA exam, which was the routing and switching domain, because routing and switching gives like in-depth idea of how things work together piece by piece. So I gave my CCNA exam and that's how I I learned like in depth about like how these things all fit together. So far, I was only looking at how internet works, how I connect to my ISP when I play a game, but I did not knew anything like what are the mechanisms and processes that actually go behind the scenes and that those parts are so critically important when they all fit together. In all of this journey from hearing about what is internet to actually knowing how the things work in as a big picture, I have realized that I small steps are really important. I knew that I wanted to do something in the network engineering industry, but I just wasn't sure like how, where, and when I have to invest my time in. So in order to have big goals and actually explore a career path for yourself, you always need to make sure that you do take small step at a time, have small victories for yourself, be proud for yourself, and then you make sure that you're enjoying the process completely and not stressing yourself out in creating something that you don't want to. Uh, that was how I became a network engineer mostly. And then after that, as I started working in the industry and collaborating with different teams and the Riot Games experience actually gave me how in-depth this can look like. So if you see an image on the right, that's basically like a Riot Direct network. And the yellow lines, if you see them, those are actual physical cables. So at Riot Games, we want to make sure that we give the best experience to players. So that's how we have a network set up. All those small blue color dots, it's actually like all the point of presence we have. So those are where the players are located. So the idea behind this is like, we need to get as close possible to the players so that we can get to connect to our Riot Games any of these games as soon as possible so that they can avoid any extra latency to play the game. So we connect to ISPs, we connect to IXS, we connect to different transit circuits um, so that that's how they actually get the best possible experience. And also the other thing I get to do at Ride Direct is like we work against any ma malicious traffic or anything that's like a DDoS attack. So we make sure that all of these things are protected and we are making sure that we do not like drop legitimate traffic over malicious traffic. So we need to make sure that the traffic has been passed correctly and then um, we're getting, uh, we, are, we are not actually giving the wrong experience. Um, the other thing I get to work with at Riot Direct is like eSports. So eSports is like one of our platform. We actually help them care providing connectivity uh, so that they can actually do their audio and video streamings. Uh, so they need to like have their audio feed sent from one part of the world to the other part of the world, like for example, from Dublin to Seattle. In order to give this connectivity and rapid uh, service, they need to have like really high bandwidth of links that's actually being used to act to pass the data from one part to another. So I help them get connected through this. And the last and the final one, as I said before, like operations is just my favorite thing in networking because you get to do real-time problems and then you just get the solution to it right away. And then I just love to do that. I need to make sure that all the lights are green and then everyone's happy if it's all green. <laughs> so that's how the networking terms looks like for any kind of network issues. Um, that's what I do at Riot. Uh, so another Riot value that I really resonate with is stay hungry, stay humble. So learning curve never stops. Every single day when the new challenges comes in or new issues come in, it's all completely, totally different from the previous one. So every day it's a new learning. So the learning never stops. So as I said, I started at education training and the best thing I did was to start early. When I was interested in it, I made sure that 
I just have to start right away. Uh, if I just kept thinking about if I should do or should not do, because this sounded really impossible at first place, because no one around, like in my bachelor's or master's degree, I didn't had any role model or any woman who was actually into this industry. So it was really difficult in the beginning to get started. But then I always rec recommend to start early, whatever you feel like or pa is, are passionate about. The other, other thing that actually helped me being at the top of the game is my mentors and, peer, uh, and my peers. Uh, so we have a mentors, I have mentors in my team who help me connect the dots. So basically during education and trainings, you know that multiple dots exist. During mentors and uh, with peer, uh, peers, we know how to connect these dots. And when you actually know how to connect these dots, you basically get to actually design the dots together as, as you feel like. So knowledge transfer is one of like the best tool and it's helping us and also helping the other person at the same time. Small achievable goals are really important uh, because if the goals are not achievable and it's not completed in time. You you feel the fatigue out of it, and you don't, uh, uh, and you feel demotivated at one point, because you feel like there's nothing that's going to the right direction. Everything is taking time. Maybe I'm not good enough, and then you start to question yourself. Maybe did you do the right decision? So I always recommend creating small achievable goals so that you know you're on point, and then sm small step at a time, then uh, makes the journey very happy. And then the only thing that I would always say is like, I want to be a network engineer ninja and I want everyone else uh, to also follow the same thing. And we create a big ninja group together as a network engineer. So the big picture, as I already said, these are the milestones I've achieved in during the whole career trajectory. In 2010, I did my bachelor's. 2016, I, I did my master's in science. This, this was the milestone that I've achieved creating my engineering degree and certification. In 2016, I planned to give the CCNA and CCNP exam to get, get in depth for the deep dive into the networking. This was a major milestone and a turning point to get network engineer as my career path and how I can pursue this. As soon as I was out of college, I started interviewing different companies for a network engineer role. The first role which I got was a company called FuseFX, uh, and I was the only woman in the networking team. It's called the IT team, actually. No, no other woman was in the team at that time. Um, so I actually was like, okay, I really see a problem here. Like, <laughs> uh, there should be a lot more engineering women here. And the network team was pretty nice. And then I had, I got like good experience around it. Uh, it was a visual effects company, so the uh, the the area or the few area was completely different than my current role. Uh, but the experience I got, got out of it, I still has that impact on me. So as we move along the path in the career, um, each experience count, each lesson count, and the learning never stops. So in 2017, I was working at FuseFX. And in 2018, I started looking for different roles, which I could challenge myself. And I wanted to keep pursuing this dream to become and be in a place where I can follow my passion more and be more challenged so that I can be where I want to be. Uh, so Riot Games was the best opportunity for me so that I can have fun as well as follow my passion at the same time. So st I started working at Riot Games in 2018 and, and currently I'm working there, work engineer. So that was just my small, sweet journey. Uh, and I hope that it helps you also get an experience on how we can actually create a path for ourselves. Even if it seems impossible in the beginning, we can carve it out, take small steps along the way, have some mentors, peers, maybe talk to uh, leaders who you can think, who you think can help you along the way and carve a path, path out. And it's nothing that you can't do. Everything is possible. And I feel like with my journey, I hope I, am, I can help you as well. Thank you. That was so awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us, Sana. And for those of you who were inspired and are ready to pursue a career as a network engineer, find a Cisco Networking Academy near you for CCNA and CCNP courses. Scan the QR code on screen or follow the link in the chat for more information. Sana, our viewers have been sending in questions for you in the chat. You mentioned several times that learning never stops for you. 
Was there a big difference in how you learned from instructor guided to self-paced? During my uh, certification training, I actually pursued both types of training, self-paced learning as well as uh, instructor-led training. So for the self-paced learning is for a few of the things that you are actually good at something or you already know something and you on the side want to get deep dive into like a technology area or some certain area where you can actually as a part time or on the side can do like a self paced training because it do not have a deadline. You do not have to uh, like uh, report to anyone, for example, but in case if you're making a career trajectory and a certification like CCNA are like the basic fundamental to be part of a network engineer. Uh, the instructor led training training is like more and more relevant because you have someone you can ask question right away. Uh, someone's there to all, always answer your question. Uh, they also help you to actually practically demonstrate what you're actually seeing on a slide. Uh, doing this yourself at the very beginning can be really challenging and tough. If you have a mentor or a guide or an instructor at that moment of time helps you act, add one plus one and then you can actually draw, draw the picture together. Uh, and then you also keep on the timeline of how you are finishing this course. Uh, if this is like a three weeks or six week course, you are you are hundred percent sure that you will be able to get through it with along with the instructor um, in six weeks, and then that's like a fixed timeline around it. Self paced, on the other hand, uh, there's no limit on the time. It's not as important uh, if you feel uh, over and prioritize over other work, for example. So I think. Uh, instructor-led training for a critical and fundamental course like CCNA um, is like a great start. Uh, these skills that we acquire via fundamental learning for routing switching, networking, ISP, service provider, or any kind of networking technologies, these skills are globally relevant. Everyone on the globe uses internet. Everyone play games in, in like, for example. So everyone needs like a good internet connectivity from across the globe. So these skills are like, will never end like any everyone needs to know how these all things work and they always need it uh, so these skills are one of the passport to anywhere in the world wow i learned something from that okay last one as a gamer how easy is it for me to transfer my skills to pursuing an it career what skills are similar uh, yes, absolutely. I'm a gamer. I love playing games. Uh, it's one of my passion as well. So uh, more than PC games, I actually play a lot of escape rooms, puzzles, uh, board games. These are like one of the areas of interest for me, uh, apart from League of Legends team fight tactics. That's one of the game I'm currently into. Uh, so being a gamer and also a network engineer, there are a few areas that overlap. I think uh, one of them I would, rec would say is problem solving. So all of these games require planning, adaptability, experimentations, uh, and over time, more and more, you get better at it. So it seems applies to any role in a career where there are challenges, there are obstacles that you basically have to figure out a way on how to find a solution on something, how these puzzles can be solved in real life scenarios and situation as a network engineer. And all of these approaches can seek to a, a successful solution based on how you develop your mind to actually solve a problem. Uh, the other thing that I would say is critical thinking. Uh, so during a computer game, it's it has multiple risks and consequences. So usually the gamers, they understand the way to analyze the alternative and what best judgment can be used in a case where something goes wrong. These judgments are usually during a game needs to be made into blink of eye. One click can actually make a big difference. So when it comes to business or any engineering career, uh, panic decisions can actually lead to devastating results. So critical thinking around solutions or fixing a problem on how to analyze something really, really makes a difference. Uh, and to add up to it, I'll add like the last one is to have fun. Like games are played to have fun. And it's actually one of the things that I also see in my career. Uh, so if you working on something that makes you happy, I, I just take like having fun would be one of the best one that I would look up to in my career. Girls in ICT Day's theme this year is access and safety. And we have founder of Gamer Safer, Maria Tamalini here to show you how she scales safe, positive and fair play experiences for gamers worldwide. Welcome, Maria. 
My name is Maria Oliveira Tamelini, and I was born and raised in Brazil, moved to the U.S. six years ago, and I am a daughter of a kindergarten teacher and a truck driver. They never touched technology. Today, I'm a founder working in tech and in games. One day, I was a girl, like many of you, dreaming about what my future could be. At that time, I lived in a countryside city, and I didn't have any support like this program to think about having a tech career or to work in games. Actually, let me tell you one thing. When I was 18 years old, when I managed to have my first computer, and mobiles didn't have half of the features that we have today. So you may be thinking, how I founded and leading now a global tech company that now serves more than 30 countries worldwide. I could share many things with you, but to make this story short, I am here today because number one, I never limited myself even when people and circumstances were limiting. It was not easy, but I found to be possible. Number two, I have always been curious and passionate about solving problems that affect myself, my surroundings, and the humanity in different ways. And number three, I've been always creating to bring people in whatever I was working on because it's really hard to solve problems and change the world working alone. Today, I lead all things operations at Gamer Safer and I advise and contribute with many organizations that you can see in this slide, they're all making a positive impact in online spaces. As I said, I've been always curious about solving real problems, problems that are affecting society in many ways, and that's how I ended founding my first company. It was in the social impact space. I don't know if you're familiar with this concept, but social impact is a significant positive change that addresses a pressing social challenge. But what are some examples of those pressing problems? Here are the United Nations Development, Sustainable Development Goals. Here we talk about fighting poverty, hunger, promoting gender equality, increasing sanitation. That's how I connected with many communities in my home country, Brazil, and that's how I um, realized that I was super passionate about working with impact. So when I moved to Silicon Valley a few years ago, I started connecting with the, the role that technologies play in impact. And I started to question myself if technology was not only solving impacts, but also creating and accelerating problems that we see in our world. So I became obsessed by solving problems that affect online users, especially young users. The four C's that you see here in this slide are an example of that. Instead of explaining all these different four C's, I want you to imagine a few situations. I know you are connected on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Discord, and of course, play games. So help me here, imagine a seven years old receiving violent videos in her WhatsApp, or 11 years old getting nude images from a young adult on Instagram, or an adult pretending to be a teenager to take advantage of a young user. You could have been bullied online. It's possibly that some private images that you have were shared without your consent. It's even possible that you clicked in some malicious links that ended installing your passwords, compromising your accounts. These are challenges that I couldn't run away from because they affect me, you, and them. These are my kids. Everything and I work for is to protect them, is to create a better world for them and for children like them, like you. I didn't mention, but I also love playing games. My older kids also play games too. So gaming became my new place to be. And thinking about scale, relevance, and influence, it's just the perfect place for someone wanting to drive an impact. But who else is playing? I want you to meet Oliver, Maya, Tom, and Helen. They're playing games for different reasons. They 
have different ages, they are based in different countries, and why they're here, why I'm presenting this to you. I'm presenting this because games are no longer a place of stereotypes. You can't define a gamer by age, gender, number of hours played, the types of games they play. We are 30 billion gamers worldwide. It's a lot of people. Just to give you an example, 88% of 13 to 17 years old play games in the US and I believe in your countries as well. The number is not that different. And 98% of young players reported positive experiences while they're playing. Games are these fantastic plates to promote connection, to connect us even with the Steam careers and to find friends, to have fun, to socialize, right? At the same time, Games became more social, right? Social platforms. They create all these different words and many online challenges popped up. Racism, sexism, scams, bullying, duplicated accounts, discrimination, predation. These are just examples of problems that are happening inside games. And they are compromising games' mission to foster positive fair play and connections for players of all identities. And we're not talking small numbers. 81% of players experience harassment in the most popular games. 37% of players cheat. And when we look into those numbers regarding harassment, 53% of online multiplayer gamers reported they were targeted because of their race, ethnicity, religion, ability status, gender, or sexual orientation. How many of you were targeted just because you are a girl, a female player, or just because you have an accent? These problems, of course, affect players, but also lead to user churn and financial losses. GamerSafer estimates that toxicity represents a $10 billion problem for this industry. So my co-founder and I went to investigate the root causes of those problems. And what we found was the combination of anonymity with non-personalized player matching. Think about your gameplay and the times you reported someone for consistently threatening you, for example. It's common finding hard to make them accountable or being punished. And even when the game do so, Nothing prevents them to create a new account under a new email and username and rejoin the game a few minutes later. Another great example, thinking about a pool of players. Why should they match a player that was previously reported by being sexist with a kick-ass female player? It's not going to be a great experience for her. Or an adult with a kid. These are all angles we're leveraging to deliver a meaningful change in this space. And that's why Gamer Safer was born, to be part of the solution and to change a systemic problem that affects millions of players every day. Gamer Safer's mission is to scale safety and fair play to millions of players worldwide. And we seek to eradicate crimes and to reduce severe transgressions. As I said, games should be a place that welcomes everyone. Everyone should feel they belong to the games they love. So GamerSafer tackles sources of risks, threats, and harms in games, and we created a cross-platform gaming ID powered by AI and computer vision, and the way it works, it's simple. Multiplayer games connect with our services, and they invite the, their players to create a gaming ID with us. You will download our app. It's available for Android and iOS. And through this process, you will prove with liveness detection that you are who you are, not a fake, and share your gaming preferences. Our software will capture all of that, anonymize all the personal information, and send a signal to the game, saying that this player is real, you should protect your experience, here are some insights to provide a better gameplay for them. That way, your gaming account and experience will be protected. And this authentication happens in only one second and is complying with all data privacy regulations. I'm happy to say the first major game using our technology is Minecraft, one of the largest in the world. We're also working with esports platforms and other services that involves online communities. Every day, 
Gamer Safer protects more than 50 million players, and we will not be the company we are today without our guiding principles. Impact, safety, and privacy are at the core of everything we create. These are our guiding start. They are all important, but I want to highlight the last one. Offer our services for free for all players. No matter where we are, we want to protect you at no cost. This is part of our impact. So now it's time to give you final words of encouragement. I didn't mention, but I don't have any technical degree. And if I could go back in time, I would definitely do a coding course or anything that helps me to understand how the technical piece of the business uh, works. And the world is ours to conquer. Dream high, keeping educating yourselves, and find the lies that will help you to execute. I'm sure I'll be watching many of you one day on stage. I'm super excited to see that. And of course, don't forget to download our app. Keep safe and game on. Thank you, Maria. I get so excited hearing stories like yours. You followed your passion, kept true to your values, and as a connector, surrounded yourself with people who helped you create a solution to keep gamers safe online. Fantastic. We had some questions come in for you from the chat, so let's take a few right now. One viewer asked, how did you partner with Minecraft? That's a great question. Thanks for bringing that, Verta. So the fabulous thing about Minecraft is that, that you don't need to partner with Mojang to work with the servers. Basically, it's a server-owned ecosystem. All you have to do is to understand technology, deliver great experience for your customers and for players, and game on. That's how we started working with them. And now, of course, Microsoft and Mojang are paying attention to everything we're doing and to the impact we are making in the ecosystem. Mm, all right. Here's a good one. What was your greatest challenge when developing GamerSafer? So I was thinking about all the challenges that I faced when I was starting. And one of the biggest challenges for me is not being technical, right? That's why I ended my presentation encouraging you to maybe you don't want to be too technical, but at least understanding a few technical things that helps a lot when you are working in the tech space. So today I, I work more as a connector between all things technical and the word that is out there. And I have to catch up with a lot of things because I'm not technical. Now I feel more comfortable, but if I started young, that will be totally different today. That's why I, I'm even encouraging my own kids and they're all doing computer science things and all of that because, you know, it's something that is super necessary in the world we live today. Thank you for sharing that, Maria. Another viewer wants to know how you collaborated and connected with others to make this happen. Well, I believe it facilitates that I am a people person um, and I'm genuinely curious about what people are doing, what are their challenges, what they're working on. And by being curious about them, it's a consequence that they will be curious about me and about what I'm doing. One thing that I've been practicing a lot is to give back. So I have this specific time in my calendar where every Friday I help people from all over the world to, you know, design their projects, with, help them with their business plans. And I, I believe that this nature of being a giver also helped me to receive a lot from people. So that's how I think I started being more comfortable also about asking for help because I was sharing, I was doing so much. I did a lot of volunteering in my life. I helped so many people. Um, and I think that empowered me to ask for help when I need it. And I have a community behind myself. Up next, this one is a two-part question. How did your education influence where you are today? And if you had to do it all over again, what technology would you learn to make your job easier? 
most of the things that I achieved in my life it was because I invested in my education. I didn't mention my presentation, but I have a degree in environmental technology, uh, international certification in social business, an MBA, all from reputable institutions in Brazil, and I still study every day. I actually was just researching a metaverse course before joining this presentation. In terms of languages and that I could encourage you to think about, instead of encouraging a specific segment, I would love to encourage thinking about a specific problem you can solve and how the technical piece can help you to achieve that. Because I think that connection, like that meaningful change that I just explained it, it's the best way of engaging with technology. And sometimes you need to talk with an engineer, with a friend or with other people that are around you to make that decision. And definitely, if you can, don't do that alone. Find other people that can you know, join this journey with you because when we share that journey, it's also easier, right? So maybe grab a friend and you can start and select something to go together. Maybe you can even design a game. That's a very fun way of engaging and learning technology too. So these are just some thoughts. Um, there are so many ways and possibilities in terms of technology today. It's just put a piece to start. Great insights, Maria. Thanks for sharing those with us. Our next guest is CEO and founder of Coalition of Parents and Esports, Shay Williams. Thank you for being here with us today, Shay. Thank you, Verda. It's really great to be here today. And we're talking about some of my favorite subjects, women in technology and esports inspiring success. My name is Shay Williams. I am known as Shaymon to the gamers online. And I am a parent who kind of saw the light when it comes to esports. I founded a nonprofit here called Coalition of Parents in Esports. And we really are setting out to tell the truth about what gaming can do to inspire success. So what's the number one source of parent guilt in our world today? Yeah, you guessed it, screen time. We hear it all the time. Limit your children's screen time because it can interrupt their education. Sitting in a chair all day can damage their health. You know, what career are they going to have if they're spending all their time playing video games? It can damage relationships. And what does this mean for your future? This is what we're constantly bombarded with in the media and from our peers. But is that the whole story? I mean, I'm a parent who everything is about moderation, but I also was watching my kids screen time and realizing there was more to it. So my story, I'm a typical mom. I have two children. 17 and 19, and they grew up playing all kinds of sports. I was the mom that was reading all the magazines and the blogs telling me what to do. And so I took my kids to all kinds of sporting events. And I also, you know, introduced technology to my kids because I am a computer science major. Technology is cool to me. So my kids, you see car, they have on headphones. They also probably have iPads in their hands because technology was just part of our life. And playing video games was one of those things we did for fun. We did in our downtime. And yes, as a mom, I even used it as a babysitter in the back seat to keep them entertained. But I slowly found myself realizing that all this technology, playing Minecraft, playing Roblox, playing Sims, it was actually sparking interest in both of them. So we started going to conferences. You see us here at a couple of events where we were going to check out new technologies like VR and looking at the you know, new games that were coming out. So I was a mom that kind of jumped in here, but I still didn't really think about it as competitive gaming or as a future business. It was just fun. It was a fun parent activity. But it all changed for me with my son because my son actually found competitive gaming. He did this all on his own, not really, didn't have much support from me. He was definitely playing on a regular office computer, didn't have the fancy mouse or keyboard. But when Fortnite came out, he actually found something that he was really good at. And I was starting to see him spend more and more time in his room practicing that. He couldn't wait to get home from football practice so that he could actually practice his game. And like any mom, I was worried about it. What does this mean? I, you know, he, he's not wanting to go to football practice because he wants to practice his games. And I didn't really understand that he was really getting into this. 
I started paying attention to him talking to his friends and talking to his teammates and realized that he was forming really incredible relationships here. He also started streaming on Twitch about this time. And I watched him building relationships with people who he was hiring to do work for him, whether it be graphic work to help him with his setups and his PCs. Some of the graphics you see here are designed by his graphic designer, who is a young woman in Turkey that he found online, networked with, and they've created all of his graphics. So I watched him doing all of this, and but the light bulb moment for me was when we went to a competitive event in New York City for Fortnite World Cup. Now, my son didn't even actually qualify for it. He almost did. He came really close. But I had told him that if he did, if one of his friends qualified, it would, that we would go to and support them. So this was a big trip for us. We went up there that summer. And what I saw was amazing. I watched my kid, who was at the time 14 years old, networking with some of the biggest stars in esports, who, of course, as a mom, I had no idea who they were. I was pointing at everybody going, who's that? And he's like, mom, that's Ninja, quit. You know, and so I had no idea what any of this was. But what I saw is I saw my son inspired by this. I also saw people in the industry of esports building all these really cool businesses. And I also saw passion. I come from Web2. I was in a software company that got acquired by IBM, and I always felt so incredibly lucky that I came out of college at the right time to be in that position of watching Web2 grow. And here I was watching my 14-year-old son, who had already kind of found the next big deal in esports, and watching his excitement and everybody around him. So we traveled around a lot. Um, this is him actually working and streaming at a Microsoft store. That's him actually at a phase pop-up shop in LA, uh, trials in San Diego and events in New York and in Toronto. So his gaming actually took him all over the place. And again, he wasn't the very best, but he was good. He worked hard and he really focused on the things he was good at. So what do I see? I see the things that video games really do, especially with parent support. When you have parent support there, that just makes all the difference. And that's what I want to change. This is a sport just like any other. So it builds confidence. It helps you connect with family and friends. Again, I talked about his friendships online. They were every bit as meaningful as the ones he had in school. But also connections to family. This was an incredible bonding moment for my son and I as I jumped in here and helped him navigate this brave new world and figure out how to negotiate contracts and all these business skills that he was learning. It also inspires creativity and technical stuff and curiosity of all these ideas. My daughter was much more interested in the creative side. She pulled out her iPad. She was constantly drawing, designing, building in Sims and Minecraft. My son was more on the technical side. He wanted to know think, how things worked. One of the other things that it does is it helps us cope with stress in our lives. I mean, how many people come home from a really stressful day at work or at school and just want to play a video game and unwind either by themselves or with a friend? Lots of studies that show that it is actually very good for that. And of course, it's fun. Anybody you know, loves doing something that's fun. And for any of you who noticed, um, the picture here to our right is um, a kid named Skeptic, who is a rather famous gamer, also came from the Fortnite scene. And he, um, his dad is actually my co-founder for Coalition of Parents in Esports. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a second. So gaming, it builds real world skills, streaming, Gaming, all these things are, you learn really incredible transferable business skills here. I mean, there's the obvious manual dexterity, problem solving, teamwork, just like any sport, effective communication. Anybody who plays on a team, especially when you're not in the same room, you've got to be good at communication. Time management, another place the parents come in great here, but time management is important. You've got to really dedicate your practice time to getting the most out of it. And then public speaking. If you're streaming, you're doing public speaking. You're, you're doing that every time you get on and stream. And that's a really incredible skill to have. And then some kids find other skills that they find interesting here. Video editing. Some kids love creating the videos and posting on YouTube. Others realize they have a knack for graphic design. Branding, marketing, social media management. That's where my son really dove in. He found all that really fascinating. 
And then others are doing their own tournaments. I talk to kids every day who are planning their own tournaments in their school or among their friends. You're learning about production and planning and scheduling. Those are great things. But then there's some things that really point towards a technical degree here. So networking, if you are helping set up network optimization or stream setups for your friend, then maybe you consider taking a networking course from Cisco Network Academy. All of these things are great and those things will lead you to these career paths. Are you interested in beta testing games? That's something my son loves to do. And I've talked to him about how all that really works and maybe he should consider courses in automation and learning those things. And then do you help your friends set up their PCs? This is the beginning of IT. My son is asked by all of his friends constantly to set up new stuff when they get PCs. And then my daughter, she's constantly building in Minecraft. So was my son. He actually became interested in building his own skins and doing his own stuff here. And that is, that's the beginning of programming. So if you have an interest in that, maybe you should really look at Cisco Networking Academy's classes on programming. Analyzing tournament results. That's something that has been really fascinating to me is to watch the kids that really dive into what it takes to be good and to score the right amount of points. That's all data analytics. Securing Discord servers, a big issue right now in our space and hacking game sheets, all those things. Cybersecurity. My son has looked into those areas and I'm actually really eager to have him take this class because that's something that he wants to learn a lot more about. And then the big thing here, I see this with this generation so much. There's so much entrepreneurial spirit here. Do you manage your own clan, your own esports team among your friends? Or have you started your own little business? That's your hustle. You should really look at taking the business class. So we mentioned Skeptic earlier, um, one of our famous gamers represented in our group. This is actually his dad. So you wanna know, can esports actually help you get a career here? Yes, actually it can. And you actually have valuable assets that these businesses need. Not only have you gotten certified and you've gotten these great skills that they need, but you've actually been in this space. You understand how esports work. This is where the next generations are interacting. They're on all of these online social medias. They're playing video games. They demand authenticity and you actually have that. Use what you love. It really use the power of what you found that you love here because that's actually a strength. And then also leverage your connections. I can't say it enough. I'll say it a few times during this presentation. Really, those connections are key. Um, and really reach out and get to know people. So how do you leverage what you've learned in gaming? Of course, networking, but also finding your passions. When you find those things that you really like that are associated with esports, whether it be the competitive side or the production or the or programming, whatever it is, learn everything and don't wait, do it now. How does a gamer get, biz, uh, get IT biz cred? How can you show them that you actually can work and you aren't just a gamer? Well, education, of course, is important. But it doesn't always have to be a traditional three to four year college degree anymore. There are so many opportunities right now to take classes online and to actually get those certifications that are so powerful in getting a job. And Web3 is exploding already and it's going to continue to over the next 10 years. This is creating so many new tech jobs and we don't have enough people to fill the jobs that are available now. It's going to, there's just going to grow. And this is such an exciting space. One of the things I love about Web3 is the gamers are on the cutting edge here. They're the ones who are exploring all of these worlds. And I really recommend jumping in because it's super exciting. I felt so lucky that I was part of Web2 and now I'm getting to watch Web3 through esports, which is just really great. And then companies need those proven skills. Get those industry certifications. They're really essential to getting a job right now. Networking, again, LinkedIn and Twitter, set it up. As soon as you're old enough to get on those, I really recommend getting on and focusing it around what you care about. Follow companies and personnel that interest you. Really see what they're talking about and then reach out to them. They always want to hear from young people who want to learn about what they're doing.
find connections in the field you're interested in, talk to them, ask them how they got started. These are great ways to learn about what you want to do. And women, speak up. You can do this too. Reach out. And then, of course, internships. There's nothing like getting on the job training. Everybody needs help. Everybody loves bringing in young minds, especially in esports. My interns are all college and high school gamers because I need them to keep me honest. I tell a story all the time about Twitter that I don't send out a single tweet until one of our teenagers has actually reviewed it and made sure it's not too boomer. So, what can you do to get your parents on board here, especially? We call this bridging the generational digital divide. First thing is listen to your parents. They just want the best for you. And unfortunately, nobody has told them that esports actually could be the best for you. So listen to their concerns, listen to what they're worried about, and then ask their advice. Ask their, for their help with some of the things that you're trying to do that you need help with. And then show them what you love. Why do you love gaming? Tell them about the connections and the friends you're making and introduce them. That was a big turning point for me and my son is when he started introducing me to his friends. And actually it turned out to be really fun for all of us. And tell them about your gaming schedule. So many people complain to me that my parents hate gaming. They won't let me practice for this tournament this weekend. Did you tell them about it? Did you plan it out? Just make sure they know and also invite them to watch. Parents will love anything you do once they understand it and they see the value in it. Tell them about your goals, both in the game and out of the game. What do you love about this? What do you plan to do with it? Just talk to your parents. You'll be surprised once you actually start explaining it to them that their opinions will change, especially when they get to watch you play. So again, my name is Shay, Shaman Online. You can find me on Twitter. Um, I founded Coalition of Parents in Esports with other parents of pro gamers and content creators. We have had a blast over the last year and a half of reaching out and speaking to kids like you all over the world who are looking to get into this space. And there's just so much opportunity here. I think esports and the metaverse is awesome. It's great for building confidence, curiosity, community, and careers. So, really, if this is your interest, don't hold back. Jump in. Do it now. Go Gamer Moms, an entire family of gamers. Just look at the awesome skills gamers are developing that are super relevant in the real world. Thanks for showing how people can make that transition from gaming to having their skills validated. And a great place to start is by taking one of the free courses being offered to you all today. Shay, we've got a few questions for you from the chat. You mentioned that you have an IT background. One viewer wants to know what inspired you to pursue technology for your education and your career. That's actually a really interesting question because I don't think I really even understood what inspired my interest in technology and computers when I was a teenager until my son got into esports. And when I started thinking about back on it, I realized that it was actually video games. The first PC that I got to play on, I you know, was learning all this stuff about programming, but I was also playing games. The first game that I played was an early PC game called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I, not only was I inspired by these games to follow technology, but it also dictated a lot of the friends that I made who were in those programs and taking these classes. So I actually ended up um, getting a degree and actually working for a startup and that was just, you know, to me, that was just fantastic. Um, I had no idea that I would come at technology from a completely different standpoint here, and I've really enjoyed it. Well, it looks like you made a great choice. Another viewer asked, for women in gaming and technology, what advice do you have to deal with the negative views? Yes, unfortunately, one of the things that I did notice in esports when I first got here is that a lot of the attitudes were very similar to the attitudes that I found when I first entered technology as a female. And it's frustrating, but I'll be honest, it only empowered me to push harder and to prove that I could do it. And that's what I tell all of you. If you have an interest in this, there's no such thing as a boy career or a girl career here. If you're interested in it, just go for it. You have every right to be doing these technology careers. Another big issue here is that girls deal with a fair amount of online harassment. Don't do that on your own. There are lots of people out there who can help you. 
turn to a trusted adult or advisor in your network and get their help. Or there's lots of organizations online like COPE who can help you deal with that. But never put up with it, never deal with it alone. We're fighting that every day. And that's actually another reason I formed COPE, because I really feel that we need to bring more parents into this space. And the more parents we have, the more you know, just natural training we have for kids at home on how to interact online. And as they grow up, they will take those skills with them. That's great advice, Shay. One last question for you. This one's interesting. What should everyone watching who plays video games do when they get home tonight? Okay, so what should you do when you leave here? Well, the first thing you should do is go home and tell your parents about what you learned today. Talk to them about what is available through this program, but also talk to them about why you're interested in it. In it. What, what, what parts of this is inspiring to you? And also tell them about your video games. So many, so many kids don't think their parents have any interest in the video games that they play. All parents play games of some sort. All of us are playing Wordle. I'm sure a lot of your parents have played Candy Crush. Just show them your video games and show them what you love about it and introduce them to some of your friends that you play with. But also walk away from here thinking, what can I learn? Which of these courses that are free from the Cisco Networking Academy can I take? And talk to your parents about those and show them that your interest in gaming is one of the things that's led you to this space. I can tell you that their view on gaming is gonna change a lot when they're looking at these courses and what you can learn. All right, thanks so much for being here with us today, Shay. We're nearing the end of our broadcast and it was an honor for me to be your host. Stick around for the event survey link to earn your certificate of participation and upload it to IT's Game On for additional points. I look forward to seeing you all again for part two of the eSports series. If you haven't already, be sure to register. Thank you, Verda. You were an amazing MC. I also want to give a special thanks to our speakers, Santa, Maria, and Shay. And thank you to all the viewers from around the globe who joined our broadcast. We hope that you saw the transition from gaming to working in a field that you love. Signing up for the free introductory courses offered to you today is the first step to getting started. You'll earn digital badges and certifications along the way to help you stand out to employers. And our event survey is now open. Follow the QR code on the screen or follow the link in the chat to complete the survey and receive your certificate of participation for attending our broadcast today. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you for part two of our eSports series soon. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Mm. There's a world where every one of us is connected. Everyone, everywhere.